many times do you have to see her name? Okay, hi folks, this is Mark Steffen here with Double Talk. And Michael Mandel, the double that makes Double Talk double. And, uh, I'm well... I'm not an echo, though. What? I'm not... What? Oh. And, uh, well, thanks for joining us here on the Las Cruces talk show of your choice. The only Las Cruces talk show in Las Cruces. That you're watching today. We believe. So, and there we have it. Uh, uh, the stars uh, and bars. You're, you look so offended to me. Are you offended by that? Where are we? Oh, there we are. Why? Okay, I kind of mention it. This was the flag that got it all started. We made national uh, uh, publicity. The national media uh, got us because we put the flag up. We didn't do it. The Tea Party used their flag. Everybody knows this by now. If they don't, well, they can't even watch the show because it's anywhere the show is going to be. The stuff about the flag is going to be because... Well, now, you know, the Tea Party got in trouble for displaying the flag. Now, we are displaying the flag. Are we going to get in trouble? Well, we were not displaying it uh, to show it off and to, to boast of our association with it. We're, we have it displayed to show that it had become a national source of antagonism. And that's exactly the perspective that you have to look at these things in. What was the point of the Tea Party putting this on their float, first of all? Well, you know what it was. With the Tea Party, they claimed that they were uh, showing the history of flags flown over the capital of New Mexico. Although this flag was never flown over the capital of New Mexico, this is the uh, Confederate naval flag, and the Navy never did dock in Santa Fe. Well, I um, think it was during the, the rainy period. Mm. And so, uh, and I don't, I don't see the New Mexico flag there. This is the uh, float. Where's f flags of uh, Navajo nations or whoever? Uh, I think they like, they happen to have a, a Navy rebel flag. Well, the, the rebel flag or the Confederate flag means a lot of things. Well, the Confederate flag flew people. over Santa Fe when it was, it, it was deserted because everybody left because the uh, Confederates were coming. And they took over the state. So they sort of invaded the state yeah. for a couple of weeks. Just, yeah. So we were under uh, domination. We were under domination when we flew the Mexican flag. Well, uh, you know, they say they wanted to give a history lesson. Another thing they could have done was have uh, people there in chains uh, portraying slaves because uh, that's the same sort of uh, despicable history from which the flag uh, comes. The Confederate flag. The Confederate flag. Comes from that From that era. History. Yes, indeed. So Where is this from? If they want to give a history roots? lesson, that's probably from Roots or yeah. Mandingo. I'm not sure. Mandingo. But yes, the Confederate flag put in context has a, a bunch of meetings. And the ACLU mm -hmm. believes that uh, they have a right to do that. They do. I, b I believe they do have a right to do that. Um, but it shows their colors, doesn't it? It does show their colors. It's, uh, the thing is, this isn't the first time they've, they've uh, displayed the Confederate flag. At a rally with, with the uh, occupiers, uh, Tea Party members showed up to protest them, and at least one person was waving a Confederate flag. So they say they're not racist, but I think the problem is they're, they're so racist it. they don't know they're racist. Well, I, they don't believe that uh, that had anything to do with racism, which means they have no empathy for other people. Right, they have former no slaves. empathy or sympathy for how, how others may take uh, their stand. The symbolism. The, that's right, the symbolism. Symbolism is a very powerful thing. Oh, yes. Uh, what was the name of the uh, NMSU uh, yearbook uh, years ago? It's called the Swastika. Yes. I don't know if it's still called that. No, it's not called that. They stopped that in probably 1970. Three, I no, think. no, no. It was still a swastika when I was in college. Uh, well, and, uh, you were in co so seventy six. When'd you get out? Seventy seven. Okay, I think they stopped in seventy six. No, but uh, yes, the, the anniversary yearbook was called the swastika. Of course. But it was an ancient, ancient Native Navajo. American symbol. It was a Navajo symbol, which the Nazis later reconfigured and stole and used. Right, the arms were a different way. Right. But nevertheless, the implication of what that uh, symbol meant. Uh, was vile to many people at that point. Those well, who should have been vile before that. Those but. who didn't know the meaning of it. That's when one thing college is for. You go there and you learn something new, like what this swastika really is. Oh, you took that when you went to that course when you went to college? You swastika did, 101. You, so at, at which point you said, wait a second. And then you protested and it was out because you have a powerful voice in this community. Yeah, one, all it takes is one person to complain and things change, right? That's true, and now we have the entire nation knowing that we had a float that actually won. I mean, who yeah. is watching? That's, that's the point. Who is grading these things? A float that merely has flags on it is, is actually 
worthy of mentioning and giving a, a they must have had some lousy floats. Well, we, didn't, we didn't see what it looked like lighted up because it, uh, it, was, it was the electric, electric light, light parade. Going. So we didn't see, I was out of town. I, I was attending another parade in another city. That's not patriotic. And uh, it was, well, this parade was much longer and bigger than the, the electric light oh, parade. longer and bigger, that's all you care about. <laughs> well, so, uh, so anyway. I'm told. Um, so, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you were talking about, you didn't see what the other contestants were. Neither did I, I got to admit it. Uh, no, but the but judges said because the lights, because it was at nighttime, they couldn't see the I flags or the content on the, on the float. Well, well that's how they judge. Which means then what are they judging? Because if you couldn't see the content of the float and all you're judging are the twinkly lights, that's you, only half a float. You know, if, if I were a teacher and I merely didn't, uh, you know, grade on content, and just sort of how I felt about each person's paper, that would be like uh, if they, they type voted. it nicely. And yeah, if it's nice, and mm. if they has have my name with little hearts around it, well, that, that, that that's that's what hey, gives it, them an extra grade. Right? Yes. So I, I don't know what the uh, voters uh, were thinking. I don't know. We but should research it. We should call them up. But uh, <laughs> Chris Cruz, who uh, organized the parade, said uh, he didn't even see the flag because he was busy getting the parade off the ground and run, rolling. Uh, Chris Co Cruz would have protested, I believe. Don't well, you think? Well, he's a smart uh, guy. He's a smart guy. But anyway, uh, th all this happened at the downtown. We went around the downtown mall area of Las Cruces, which apparently didn't work so well. Uh, people complained <laughs> about nowhere to park, nowhere to stand. It was a very short route for the uh, parade. And they probably complained about the fact that it rained as well. <laughs> and it did get <laughs> rained on the entire yeah, time. So the downtown mall, oh yeah, they went around the wrong way, <laughs> which is okay because nothing else is happening. And we'll, so we'll see what happens with that. But speaking of the downtown mall, Who and was? The, the farmers you market, were? yes, uh, is now has a moratorium placed upon it, by which no more vendors may sell during Saturdays and Wednesdays. I assume. I wonder what uh, farmers market that is with a farmers and crafts market. Yeah, that's a nice little uh, uh, silo there. This but the they're going. They have stopped giving uh, lessons on how to have your your uh, little shop on the mall and they expect to have people back up in uh, more applications taken by november well i remember i haven't seen the downtown farmers and crafts market this full since uh, the holidays that's usually when they would fill up people are selling people well, come out to sell stuff for nice. the holidays but uh it's, it is at full capacity i guess and uh, unless they find a larger place to have it like maybe the country club well, we want to keep the downtown mall occupied. <laughs> occupied downtown mall. Well, because uh, it's one of the few things going on on Saturdays on uh, the downtown to, mall. Uh, well, the city is trying to get people to be aware of the downtown mall so businesses will go in so we can make it a thriving uh, city center once again. And there are a lot of people selling things, and that's what makes other people come in, and that's why people can go there and eat lunch or brunch at La Iguana. No, they can't. What? Sorry, Michael. I guess I just don't know what's going on in this town. You would think if the farmers and grass mm -hmm. market was so would crowded with great people that they that they would have had enough customers money. at lunchtime on Saturday to pay to their rent, stay in business, to pay their rent is, is what too the bad they didn't. Was. Yes. Now another Alas. thing. Well, another thing that happened. Yes. Is, um, Tell me. This week is the governor. Well, the state of Ed, state of New Mexico handed Su out Susie Martinez grades for schools, not students, but the schools themselves received grades. And uh, most of the uh, the average grade in Las Cruces was about a C, which is what average school. is. You know, we talk about grade inflation in the schools, right? Mm -hmm. In the old days, C was average. If you did a little better than average, you got a B. If you did something superb, you got an A. Not everybody's superb. That's why C was an average thing. And then you know, under C or under C, you have well, a sponge the SpongeBob, SpongeBob SquarePants. SquarePants and. Uh, uh, no, you have the people that you probably didn't want to associate with, but uh, I'm not denigrating them in any way. So C is the average. So anything above C is good. We have 67% of the schools in uh, Las Cruces uh, having a C. If it weren't for the ones under a C, then C wouldn't be average, right? It's true. You, you need somebody some below. Some. There's it, a curve there. It's I like the IQ. Well, you know, they the accuse if students were being graded. Yes. Uh, and they would school they and uh, they would accuse the schools of teaching toward the test. Instead yes. of, uh, you know, instead of 
teaching and then testing what they what the kids should have learned. Well, maybe the schools should uh, be taught toward the test. Well, that's so how they, they get better grades. Well, they are told what the criteria is. Every time you have a test, you need to know what the criteria is. Obviously, we were teaching, but we had the wrong criteria. We were teaching stuff like how to do recess mm. or uh, how to text while the teacher is talking. I, I don't know what they're teaching, but somebody has to be below a C so that C becomes relevant. If everybody is above C, what do you got there? Good grades. It's just like students in class, you know, anybody getting a C feels like they're cheated. Every student in class thinks they should get an A because they tried really hard. Well, uh, you have to blame the teachers because you know what they say, Michael, those who can't do teach and those who can't teach taught at my school. <laughs> but I, I've noticed that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but speaking it's of probably your parents. Speaking parents, of school, you know, there's, who's new, speak, speaking of schools? there's okay. a new school under construction downtown on the downtown mall like we were just now talking. And which I think is a terrible place to put a new school. If they want to revitalize the downtown Main Street area, why put a school there that's closed on the weekends, closed at night? Uh, it's not going to attract customers to downtown. Uh, you know, they should have put a hotel there who, with, who with a restaurant. I don't know who decides these no, things. No, no, I mean, the school decides where there's a building. It's a private school. Right, it's a private school, but the school decides where they can get a building cheap. And that building was cheap because that had been Lost unused. Lost furniture. Yes, it had been unused since probably the year I came to town, I think, like probably 1990 or so. And uh, people have looked at that space. It's a, it was a hard space to recondition. Black been, Box Theater was thinking I of going been, in there. I would have torn it down and started it fresh with a hotel. They've th With a hotel? Yeah. Who wants to be downtown? You, downtown no wants it to be downtown. There's no parking there. would there. be there. There's a parking lot right next door. It would be t totally full. If you realize they, they need they've determined parking downtown. on Saturdays that the downtown mall is like 93% full. That's why they need multi-tiered parking like other real cities have. Santa Fe has it. Uh, Prescott, well, Arizona has it. Perhaps we're not a real city yet. Well, we're not we're yet. Not we're not yet. We'll be a real city someday. But, um, anyway, that's how I see it. And speaking of school, uh, medical marijuana is in the news again. Wait. Yeah. Because... I have uh, a cold. Is, oh. that, is that good enough to have uh, mer medical marijuana? Depends on your doctor. I guess so. Uh, but Big there was what happened good there? pictures. What happened to the medical marijuana good here in pictures. New Mexico? Somebody was denied being able to sell a it. license in Hobbs. Really? I mean, you know what happens if you don't give licenses to medical marijuana? People start, you know, continuing, not start, continuing to do, you know, meth and all those things hmm. that are much more easily uh, uh, affordable. So you can So now they've made it harder to get medical marijuana in the state. I, I don't know what the big thing. Uh, why the governor is so against medical marijuana. We've had medical opium uh, for years, morphine. You mean like my, Vicodin and That's stuff available like that. under a doctor's Tylenol prescription. Tylenol with codeine. But not marijuana? Well, Which is going to be legalized in a few years anyway? Uh, apparently 6,000 people in the state are uh, have the right to have medical marijuana, yet there are only 23, dare I use the term, dealers? Well, can I use dealers? First, they have to grow it here because you can't import it. Which would be illegal. You have to grow it here. Right, you need the right to grow it. And then you have the, yes, and then you have to sell it. And uh, there you go. So what's the argument? Do we have an argument here? Oh, that there you should they give more them. licenses to people. Yes. The criteria is who you are uh, and what your background is. And if you're just who you pay a off? pusher from some uh, little burg in California, well, maybe you shouldn't be selling it. But if, if you're a sweet old lady who has sprinkled some uh, bird seed on your lawn and by accident got marijuana leaves, well, maybe that sounds good. Well, listen, let's uh, ponder this while we take a break. We're going to go, you want to go get high? And um, we'll discuss no, we'll, it. Well, when we're high? We wouldn't want to do the show when we're high, do we? Well, who says we don't? Oh, okay. I guess we will be back wh when? When are we coming back to the show? Right now. Okay. We're going to be... We'll leave you. Welcome you guys can go do whatever you want. Located away from the crowds, but close to home. Come in throughout the day for Jazzercise, the world's dance fitness leader for nearly 40 years. Treat yourself to a relaxing massage. Or unwind the lounge area or outside on the balcony with friends. La Buena Vida Women's Club, located and designed with women in mind. For information, call Diane at 650-9721. Celebrate, celebrate, Fiesta Motors. Come and see us today and discover why our service is second to none. 
In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. When you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Maine. See you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors. We're buying a car. It's always a celebration. Tungsten Interiors. Make yourself a beautiful home. The most beautiful homes in Las Cruces have one thing in common. It's Don Tan Interiors, the local experts in granite countertops and fine kitchen cabinetry. When it comes to home improvement, think Don Tan Interiors. Don Tan Interiors, make yourself a beautiful home. Well, we're back watching Double Talk. Watch us. We're watching... Oh, yeah, we get to watch it uh, while we're talking. That's true, we do. It's like feedback. Every, except everything's reversed because I see you wearing a red shirt and me wearing a blue shirt. So everything is just totally reversed. Oh, so you did get high. Oh, get? <laughs> More? <laughs> no. Hey, I saw in uh, the paper the other day that uh, the city of Las Cruces was holding a casting call for a production they were going On to Wednesday, film. On Wednesday, I believe, yes. And they were looking for people to portray the roles of students and uh, bullies, bystanders. Bullies, a bully. Bullies. Yeah, it was, it was a little PS public service announcement about uh, school bullying. And uh, so there was uh, going to be no pay for this. No pay. People expected to work absolutely free. Why is that? Because that's what they could afford. People don't uh, value um, the actors, artists uh, and actors. No, no. Don't pay for what you're you get. You're all supposed to work for free. You know, that's exactly what some people want this country to, to be like. Well, we should cut expenses and just, you know, they say we should have more jobs, right? Sure. New people say she wanted to have orphans work for free. Why not? They could earn their keep. But you, they, people want to cut programs, uh, yeah. government programs, things that are unnecessary. But they want to make jobs. Well, if you cut the programs, who are you paying in these programs? Who does w government money go to? The big corporations? Well, that's what big corporations that's what like. They want. The little guy who, who needs money? Well, that's where the jobs come from. But if you cut all these, these uh, uh, programs that they say are unnecessary, then you end up having casting calls where nobody gets paid. They're not doing anything unionized. No, but the people making it are getting paid. The, the right, the ph photographers yeah. are, and yeah. the city. The people who who are producing the video are getting paid nicely. So this is so. a movie about bullying. Who's bullying who here? I believe that the people who are doing the video are bullying their cast. That's into, true. Into wanting to have some sort of fame, and yet not uh, paying them. And uh, yeah, they're a bunch of hypocrites, aren't they? Let's see that picture of that bully. Let's see a bully. Hey, you yeah. Oh, there. See? See? What kind of hula hoop is that? That's a hooligan that's looking a, through a... A hooligan through a hula hoop. Anyway, no, so... No hula hoops. So there you have a, uh, a bully who's pushing people around, which is kind of what you're doing when you're asking people to work for free. Work for free. Well, you know, some people should just come out of their shell and refuse to do it. Speaking of shells, I heard that the... Uh, shells? That the Chupadera spring snail is going extinct. Did you hear it from the Chupadera Spring Snail Facebook page? I don't know where I heard it, but that's them. That, uh, it's the that's not to be confused with endangered. the chupacabra. Is no, it? not that's a little different. But these little chingaderas that has horns. These don't have horns. They uh, yeah. This is the Chupa Chupadera Spring Snail. A little lower, and you're going to be eating sand. You mm. better watch it. Uh, and well, I'm going to have to give up escargot apparently. Apparently, you can't have it's on the endangered list. Although. Although, if we cultivate this now, we could have very exclusive uh, escargot. We could sell it to fancy French restaurants. Uh, apparently, mm -hmm. only one place in New Mexico or anywhere mm -hmm. uh, between these two springs, it needs fresh water to exist. It's between two springs on private property, and uh, it's endangered. And it's been declared endangered since 1984. And the people who are actually trying to get these... Uh, uh, safe, haven't seen evidence of it for the last 10 years. They finally saw it, and they want to make sure that it stays there. So uh, what's, what's going to be next? Uh, Steve Pierce is going to complain that he can't drill oil there now? Yeah, he, well, his uh, theory is any place you find an endangered species is a good place to drill. Sure, drill, maybe drill, uh, and then spill, baby spill. And then frack, baby frack. Well, what the, what the snail needs is water, 
And we're in the rainy weather right now, so there should be plenty of water. That's fresh water, right? That's true. But you know what? We have to help a snail because the snail can not stand up for itself. Well, look at the rainstorms we, we, we get here. Uh, we got a picture of some rainstorms that we get. We're getting here now, oh, now so that we're, we're in the rainy season. Because you don't think, because people don't know that it's raining here. You well, don't know. You know, if you live in one part of town and true. you go someplace else and you see it's all wet, you go, ooh, what? It doesn't, always, break or something? doesn't always rain the same time in the same place. It's weird. But we get these columns of rain that come down, which is you don't see in a lot of places. Kind of cool, but you can see it in this next picture, right? Do you have a next picture? I Did ordered one. Did you do one. a next picture? I ordered another picture. I don't know up. if we've got it or not. We need a next picture with Okay, well, there's pepperoni. a column of rain there. Okay. That's and what a column of rain looks like. Or it could be like a dust devil, a, sn a rain devil. Well, see, that's here it is. Here where you can see the uh, horizon 30 miles away, Yes. you can do that. In other places where you're surrounded by trees and tall buildings, you don't. You just think it's raining everywhere. You know, I kind of love that about this area. I do. Yeah, you know, I. I don't know if anybody really knows that I'm from uh, uh, upstate New York, where they have trees and mountains, so you can't see anything. Right. You're in there. If it's raining, man, it's raining. The thing is, you see one thunder cloud one day. That means it's going to rain for the next eight days usually. Mm -hmm. Here, you see one thunder cloud. Eight minutes. It's probably <laughs> one, one, it's one thunder cloud. You know, it's gone here today, gone in a second. Well, Michael, you know, you sure you talk a lot about the weather, but I you don't do a, a damn everything. thing about it. I do. You know what? I have uh, a ceiling on my house that is covered with shingles, and it protects the house. Uh huh. So that's what I did with the weather. Keeps so you got shingles? You know, there's a vaccination for that now. Really? Now you tell me. Yeah. After I've had them. Well, anyway. if, you've, if you've had shingles, oh, what do you, pops, do about you the get weather? the shingles. You know what you do when it the rain when it's raining bad? Go eat in a restaurant. Well, hopefully they don't have a leaky roof. Hopefully but uh, there's plenty of good restaurants in Las Cruces to eat in, and, and uh, lots of not-so-good restaurants that most people eat in, <laughs> like me. What? Not so, not so good? You, you have complaints about certain restaurants. You know, we're looking at the, uh, the uh, things that are voted best Mexican restaurant. You know, a lot of people, I guess voting is not as uh, liberal as it is when we actually have real elections. I think for when politicians. they have the, when the newspaper has all these voting, you know, somebody stuffing the ballots because yes, uh, of course they are. Roberto's wins constantly. All, I don't all know the why. people that work there, you know, stuff send in their choice for his restaurant as as best Mexican restaurant. Now, okay, I'm not saying the food's terrible, but I do hate eating off styrofoam plates with plastic forks, uh, which is why I don't eat there. Oh, or go to picnics. Yeah, picnics no, of stuff. I don't have plastic forks for my picnics. You don't? Well, not those plastic forks. That oh, the bend, the, the bendable you ones? You can't even cut into your enchilada? No, really, you can't. I don't like cutting into a styrofoam what plate. Are, what are the restaurants that people like? You know, we talk to lots of people. I mean, I, I walk down uh, the streets asking people what their favorite restaurants are. And, really? Uh, yes, don't you? Well, sometimes I do, and I, I prefer one one block away from from uh, Roberto's, which is called... Uh, Miguel's. Miguel's. We both like Miguel's. Miguel's is a very good restaurant. I, I really like that place. Yes, and they're not even sponsoring the show, w but they should. Uh, Miguel's has good food, uh, and they're easy Quick, to go to. It's easy. What's the other one? Delicious. Well, Delicious. Everybody likes uh, Delicious. Same street again. Yes. Uh, there's uh, and, um, good stuff there. I like Los Mariachis over there at Motel Boulevard. That's pretty good. Is that where you said, where did you say you had a good... I had a good uh, breakfast there. I, had also, a, I also, yes. also had another good Huevos Rancheros for breakfast at La Posta last Sunday. You know... They started doing breakfast Saturdays and Sundays. You eat a lot of Huevos Rancheros, I like my Huevos Rancheros. What are the Rancheros doing about their Huevos if well, they're eating them all? Mm -hmm. uh, they're growing new ones. <laughs> uh, in fact, what I think we should do is... As an endangered we should species. Do, we should eat at restaurants and rate the Huevos Rancheros in town. And now I'll come back and give my uh, list of the best Huevos Rancheros in Las Cruces. Sounds like a better idea than my idea of uh, going to different church sermons and rating them. Well, you go right ahead. I, I'm never up that early. But I, I did have a nice lunch at Cafe, Cafe Agogo. And Cafe Agogo is uh, run by the woman who started uh, Bobas, Bobas many years ago, and mm -hmm. she sold it. And uh, if you like that style of restaurant, also Slightly Toasted does a very similar type of uh -huh. uh, Cuisine, which is called sandwiches. Mm. Well, Good you know, sandwiches. we're slightly toasted. Used to be, is now used to be sweet S indulgence, or now right. it's called SI, SI, and it's on Idaho. I like that place pretty well. The food's rather good there. They actually do have uh, good and seafood. And great desserts. Good seafood. Now we also need to mention, in, in passing, who the, passed? The passing of Ernest Borgnine, um, Academy Award-winning actor. He was 95 years old. He'd been uh, a Hollywood star for 50 years. 
And people know him when his hair was darker, and I think the gap between his teeth was smaller. I don't know. Uh, he, he, was, he was in the Poseidon Adventure. He yeah. was in a lot of TV shows, uh, too. He did. Uh, oh yeah. He was a guest uh, a lot. Yeah, in several series. He won his Oscar for Marty. Yes. Uh, I liked him in Bad Day at Black Rock, played a bad guy there. He was uh, uh, never supposed to be an actor. He was in, in the, the Wild Navy Bunch. And Mikhail's Navy. Navy was another series he started. I love that show. That? Yes, yeah. sure. He was Mikhail. That was good. And uh, we also need to mention that uh, one of my favorite actors of all time, Peter O'Toole. Oh, I thought you say Dave Edwards. He didn't die, but no. he did retire. Kind of. So he, he graciously bowed out. He says it. time to retire. Well, of course he had to retire. Look at, he has to wear rags on his head. Well, that's him as his most famous role of Lawrence of Arabia. The first time and he was yeah. nominated for an Academy Award. And, and that's when he was nominated for the Bob Divin uh, Man of La Mancha role. Here he is, a Man of La Mancha. He was nominated for eight times for an Academy Award, never won. I think they're probably going to give him a Lifetime Achievement Award. They did in 2003. They did, okay. Yeah, so we can good. be happy about that. Well, they should have. Because even though any one role wasn't fabulous, altogether, he had a great career. I mean, great you know, career. He, he had a great career. He lived a great life. He, great he, star. He made lots of money. He was uh, very popular yeah, and, and drank a lot. Oh, oh. You know, he I, did taste tests, he was not a, like we do. He was an actor's actor, that guy. Classic. They'll do a life story of him. That's true. Now... Coming up today, or not not today, when next today? Saturday, next Saturday, the 21st of July. Well, right now you can still go down to Downtown Mall and adopt your pet. We're talking about dogs and cat adoptions. Uh, but next Saturday, from 9 to 12, you can get low-cost uh, chips, microchips. Chips? Microchips and uh, vaccines and worming. Low-cost. Worming? Yeah, or deworming. Deworming? Worming and deworming, I think, are the same thing. Well, do you talk to a worm about that? And uh, you can, yeah, you can call the number there, 644-0505. That's the uh, APA. Action Programs for Animals. Action Programs for Animals. For more info. For more info. And also, you can, they have pet adoptions uh, today from 10 till 3 at Petco. And I found uh, some cheap chips at uh, uh, Family Dollar. You could get, remember, ever have Wise potato chips? Oh, Did you ever hear of them? No. They're like a New York... They, they were the New York Lay's uh, potato chips. You uh -huh. get them for a dollar a bag, uh, which is equal in price to the cheapest you can get Lay's potato chips in Las Cruces. Uh, not that I'm advertising uh, Family Dollar, but Lay's potato chips, New York version of Lay's potato chips. Well, we got to go now because we we're okay. out of time. And that's it. Thanks for joining us right here on uh, Double Talk. What's next? Oh, yeah, they're talking now. We're going to see the whole movie, so stay tuned. You'll see the entire <laughs>